Record the Gwil, uh, Dia Gwiv Golair, August Falter Roiv, um, Tad Lundari Makri, uh, Shasavan Shaw, Mar Udor, and Lower Untok Unlimited Heartbreak. Um, Bavalam Buekas of the Wall, Dunigdina Golair, Achauri Glum, Kone Achriot Nu, uh, Vime Gober Godin, Erfeg, Kupla Mi, Iktosak and Vlian, August uh, Tasha Kriot Nanish, August Lower Untok Isha Ayam. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming here tonight uh, for the launch of Unlimited Heartbreak, the inside story of Limerick Hurling. It kind of gives a definitive, a definitive account of the history of Limerick Hurling through the eyes of the players, the managers and the county board officials back to, I suppose, the mid-30s really, thanks to Tommy Cook who is present here tonight and who is delighted to be here. I suppose I'm glad that uh, I was able to get two of the 1940 team, two uh, remaining members, I suppose, of the 1940 panel, Tommy, who was on the starting team, and also Tony Herbert, who can't be with us tonight, uh, who went on as a sub in the 1940 All-Ireland Final, and I suppose it was a massive honour to interview those. Um, we don't have many All-Ireland medal winners in Limerick. Uh, we have the two from 1940 and those from 1973. And unfortunately, that's more or less it, you know. And I suppose I was privileged to be able to interview the entire starting team from 1973 as well, along with the soap who went on that day, Tom Ryan. Um, Limerick hurling, I suppose, is something that has broken all our hearts over the years, you know. Um, my first game was in 1987, <coughs> when Limerick played Cork at Simple Stadium. And uh, I suppose that's one reason why there's a huge account of that game in the book, you know. My first time seeing Limerick uh, lift silverware would have been the 1992 league final. Um, Kieran Carey is here tonight and uh, he scored a couple of incredible points in the second half of that game. And his father-in-law, Phil Binnis, was the manager, uh, I suppose an excellent manager for Limerick at all levels. He delivered an All-Ireland minor title and he delivered an under-21 All-Ireland title. And some feel maybe that uh, he was removed too easily and too quickly maybe after losing to Clare in 1993. But, um, I suppose county boards have a habit of removing managers in Limerick maybe before their time. And his uh, successor, Tom Ryan, won two Munster Championships in the National League and he was also removed. So I suppose there's a full account of all the, of all the managerial appointments and uh, dismissals, I suppose, in this book, you know. To be fair to the book and to be fair to me and to be fair to Limerick Hurling, I think I would ask anyone who's going to comment on the book to read it cover to cover and maybe even read it a second time because I don't think you can judge a book by its cover or by the negative headlines in the Limerick Leader last Thursday week. And um, I would hope that people will do that. They will read it cover to cover. And uh, I guarantee you any Limerick supporter who does read it cover to cover will be impressed by it. There are controversial issues raised. Um, but uh, there have been controversies in Limerick hurling, you know. And uh, I suppose... We cannot change our ways in the future unless we accept and address what happened in the past. I suppose it's a Limerick Hurling book. It tells the story. It is the story of Limerick Hurling told by Limerick Hurling, not by me. And um, I think that any child who's born in the county over the next few years and they ask their fathers questions about what came before in terms of Limerick Hurling, they'll all be able to show it in this book and will tell this story from start to finish up along to the present day. And I think, I think, I hope that the book will be recognised for that and not for the controversies and the misleading headlines that have been associated with it. There are some excellent photographs and basically you, you, you need photographs in a book to, I suppose, tell a pictorial history of Limerick Hurling as well. You know, it's not, it's not enough to tell it in words. Sometimes a picture paints a thousand words and I especially like to thank uh, Jerry Piggott for the photograph he gave me for the 1940 All-Ireland Final. It's an action shot in the 1940 All-Ireland Final. And uh, a lot of games of that era, maybe such photographic material wouldn't exist, you know. And I'd like to thank him, and I'd like everyone to give Jerry Pickett a round of applause for handing me that. I'd like to thank my family, uh, especially. Um, my mother, I suppose, would have recognized I was a weak English student in school. Uh, <laughs> She sent me for grinds to a teacher in not long by the name of Ger Power. Uh, I don't know, it was like, I suppose, an old donkey that wouldn't move and you're trying to bait him to get him going, you know. So, um, hopefully this won't be my last book either, you know. You'll never know, there may be a sequel if I'm still alive. 
you, you'd never know if, if, if I'm still alive in a couple of years' time after this one. There might be a sequel, you know, but um, I suppose one thing I'd like to say is I, um, I purposely didn't interview the current Limerick Senior Hurling panel. Um, I've been subject to an awful lot of criticism for that, an awful lot of personal criticism. Some people are very upset over it. Uh, well, at least that, that perception, or maybe it might be a misconception, has been presented to me. Um, at the end of the day, Limerick senior hurling is too important to be upset in the camp by producing the book has caused enough of trouble as it is, you know. Besides having, you know, and there's enough of trouble in the Limerick senior hurling camp from time to time. Besides, uh, besides contributions to the book causing more, you know. And maybe one day we'll see the McCarthy Cup back here in the Cook Holland Lounge again. Yeah.